Welcome back. Day two. Yesterday we studied what really makes us successful or not. We said that the answer is power. That this whole program is about personal power. Being able to get yourself to take action and follow through. Did you do your exercise? Did you follow through on your success journal yesterday? If you didn't, please turn off this tape. Do not listen to this tape until you've done exercise from day number one. If you did day number one, you've gotten yourself to take some kind of action. You made a decision and you used your power. Maybe in a simple way. Maybe in a basic way. But what happens is, as we talked about in the last tape, every single day by doing just a little bit, we begin to improve. We develop more strength. Again, like lifting weights. The first day we start lighter and the next day a little bit heavier. And we're going to move to stronger and stronger amounts to we're able to move our life in the direction we want as quickly as we can think it. That's our goal. To be able to use our personal power on a daily basis. Now, in order to do that, we've got to see what normally stops people from using their personal power. And that's the purpose of this tape. I want to share with you what I believe is the controlling force in all human behavior. What drives us? In other words, everyone could take action. Literally, if it's that simple, if all it takes to succeed is the ability to know what you want, take action, know if it's working, and keep changing until you get what you want, how come everybody doesn't do it? And as we've already alluded to in this first tape, the reason is fear. And the fear is usually fear of failure or success or rejection. But the real word I would use for this thing we're afraid of is pain. I believe that every single person on this earth is driven by two forces. Number one, their need to avoid pain. And number two, their desire to gain pleasure. Those two twin forces are the drive behind all human behavior. So let me ask you a question. My guess would be this isn't the first set of self-improvement tapes that you've invested in your lifetime. Did you really use the last set you invested in? My hallucination is, the answer is no, you didn't use them at least at the level you could have. And the reason I quote unquote hallucinate that is I found out the statistics show that less than 10% of the people who purchase tape programs ever listen to them in their entirety. That just blows my mind. Somebody's invested money, time, they wanted a result, but they didn't follow through. Or worse, they invested in a program and they listened to it and then they didn't use what they listened to. God, if there's anything that I'm going to try and push you to do as your friend and as your success coach, if you'll let me be that for you in this program, it's to get you to act on everything we talk about, to keep the ideas simple and focused, but get you to use them. See, you don't have to have a complicated idea to make a difference in your life. What you need are ideas that you apply. And that's what we're really going to go for a thousand percent in this program. But the question is, how could somebody go to school? How could somebody go to a seminar? How could somebody read an excellent book? and still not produce the result, not apply all the stuff that they've read. And you know what, I've been guilty of it too, so I'm not pointing fingers. I have, I remember I read a book, and it was a great book, and it was all about how to manage my finances. And I remember reading this thing and saying, this is great stuff, I've gotta do this, and I was inspired. But you know what? About a month later, I noticed I hadn't done anything on it. You know, I just got caught up, you know, doing things, and gosh, the phone was ringing, and I had to do this stuff at the house, and God, I mean, you know, I had to handle this daily, I had to take out the trash, and. Besides that, you know, my mom called and hadn't talked to her in a long time, you know, and, you know, my son needed this, and, you know, you get caught up. You can't get caught up. What you've got to do is you've got to use your power and get yourself to follow through. So why didn't I follow through? I obviously wanted the results that I knew this book could give me. Why haven't you followed through on some of the things you know you really want? Why not? Why haven't you used your personal power and taken action? What has prevented you from taking action? And I would suggest to you, it's what this tape is about. The two controlling forces have directed your life and kept you at times from taking action. And those forces, again, are the twin forces of pain and pleasure. Remember, everything we do in life, we do out of our need to avoid pain or our desire to gain pleasure. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you're a lady listening or a gentleman, but when I speak to audiences, I'll invariably ask the ladies in the audience, please raise your hand if you put on makeup today. Do you know that 90% of the audience will raise their hand? Many times, 99. Now, think about that. Why do they put on makeup each day, or why do you if you're a lady? Why? Is it because you wake up in the morning and say, look in the mirror and say, God, I love this process? <laughs> I doubt it very seriously. Why you put it on is for one of two reasons. You put on the makeup because in your mind you say, you know, putting on makeup makes me feel more attractive. So what is that doing? Why are you taking action to gain pleasure? Or you might say, well, gosh, when I put on makeup, people think I'm more attractive. They feel more attractive to me, which, again, makes you feel good. It makes you feel a pleasurable type of feeling. That's why you do it. Now, some people wake up in the morning, and that's not why they put on makeup. 
Some women wake up in the morning and they say, how come men don't have to do this? <laughs> but they still do it. Why? Because their brain says, well, if I don't put it on, somebody's going to say, what happened to your face? <laughs> and some people, of course, do it for a combination of the two. The point is, the only reason they put it on is to avoid pain and to gain pleasure. Some combination of those things. Hey, have you ever procrastinated? You say, what a dumb question. Of course. What is procrastination? It's the opposite of using your personal power. It's being immobilized. It's needing to do something and not following through. I call it the silent killer because it grows on you. It just kind of creeps along until pretty soon it's taking control of your life. Pretty soon you find yourself immobilized in a bunch of areas and you don't even realize it. You don't even notice all the freedom you've given up just because of procrastination. So what is it though? Why do we procrastinate? Why do we not use our power? Which is what we talked about on the first tape. Let's figure out what stops us. The reason is when we procrastinate, it's because we think that taking action, whatever action we're putting off, that taking that action would be more painful than doing nothing or not taking action. That's the bottom line. In other words, by not taking action, we experience less pain than taking action. Now you might say, Tony, but if I take action, I, I could get the pleasure that would come from succeeding or having the job done. That may be true, but what's more real to you when you procrastinate is the pain you'll have to go through to get the job done. Isn't that true? Think about it. Don't take my word for these things. You gotta take whatever I say and say, hey, that makes sense to me or it doesn't. Don't just buy anything I share with you. Think about it, make sure it makes sense to you. And once it does, then we've got to start making sure you use it. Now, let's look at the other side. Have you ever procrastinated for so long that at one point it reversed on you? Where all of a sudden your brain said, God, i got to do this. Because not doing it is more painful than just getting the job done. Haven't you been caught in that place? Did you ever, were you ever one of those people that did your turn paper like a week before, or maybe worse, the night before? <laughs> the whole time doing the turn paper was painful. God, having to do that, that's such a pain. But the night before you thought, if I don't have it done, that's going to be even more painful because I'm going to have to walk in there without it. And so all night long you experience pain of getting the job done. Common experience for too many people. Why? Because they haven't learned how to control the motivating forces of pain and pleasure. They are the controlling force of your life. Now, where else do they affect you? Well, let's take a look. Do you overeat? Some people say, well, I'm going to go on a diet. Yep, I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to starve myself and then I'm going to be real skinny. How often does that work? Now, I'd say slim and none. In fact, studies show that 95% of the people who go on a diet within two years have not only gained the weight back, but have also usually gained an additional two pounds beyond the weight they were on when they went on the diet in the first place. See, trying to create more pain in your life rarely works because i got to tell you something. The need to avoid pain is biological. It's built into your nervous system. Why? Because it's a survival mechanism. And your brain is going to fight like crazy any time it sees that you're asking it to do something that's going to lead to pain. So what do we need to do to change our eating patterns? What do we need to do so we get permanent weight loss and we have the physical health we want? Well, the first thing I would do if I were you is I'd find some of the foods that you're obviously addicted to. And in other words, foods that you eat on a regular basis and you eat them in excess. Why do you eat them in excess? Well, because when I was growing up, these and these things happened to me. No, that's not true. There's only one reason you eat more food than you should. Because it's pleasurable. Because <laughs> you like to eat that chocolate. Because you think, good die of a chocolate. And you just go into a state where you got to have it. See, you associate deep, deep pleasure, and that's why you go for it. Now you say, yeah, but being fat is really painful. That's true. But the reason you ate the chocolate, because in that moment, what was more real to you? The pain of being fat or the pleasure of the chocolate? I would assume that it was the pleasure of the chocolate if you're overeating. So what we've got to do to make a change in our life is not go out and discipline ourselves, but to change what we link pleasure and what we link pain to. So what if you saw somebody that you were really attracted to, and you wanted to be with them, you wanted to develop a relationship, but you didn't follow through? How come? Real simple, isn't it? Because you associated more pain to walking up and asking him for a date than not doing it. You thought, well, gosh, but if I could do it, I could have the pleasure. But which one was a more powerful motivating force? The pleasure of being in relationship or the potential pain of being rejected? If you didn't follow through, we know the answer, don't we? The pain. And I'm here to tell you something that for years I would have probably argued with you if you would have said this to me. Because I feel like I'm a real proactive person. But if there's anything that my research and human behavior has shown me time again,